Attack the Block is a 2011 movie directed by Joe Cornish and starring John Boyega in his first role. The movie is a horror comedy depicting a young street gang fighting against deadly extraterrestrial monsters. Beyond being a decent popcorn movie about teenagers versus aliens, the movie also works as a satire of class barriers. And personally, I really like the movie. Some of the one-liners made me laugh and kids die in this movie, which is pretty cool. I mean, it's, it's not cool that they die. It's just rare to see that in a movie. So I think it's an underappreciated British sci-fi movie and if you've never seen it, maybe you should give it a try. The monsters in the movie are gorilla-sized creatures with pitch black fur and luminescent teeth. This is still today among my favorite monster designs ever. Of course, these monsters do not exist in real life, but some of their features and traits are biologically plausible. The aliens boast a thick, intensely black fur that doesn't reflect light. That's black. Too black to see. That's the blackest black ever, fam. That's blacker than my cousin Femi. This is reminiscent of super black carbon nanotube materials, such as Vanta Black. This type of coating is considered the world's darkest material, absorbing up to 99.9% .9 of visible light. In nature, the most efficient biological example of structural absorption is the super black plumage of birds of paradise, which you have probably seen before in some documentaries because they are very good dancers. warm in here. Interestingly, it doesn't seem that Birds of Paradise were a direct inspiration for the design of the monster. I came up pretty early on with the idea of a, of a silhouette because it occurred to me we could use a sort of rotoscope technique, which basically came from this uh, memories of Ralph Bashke's Lord of the Rings as, as a kid where he used a lot of um, live action photography that they then painted over to make it flat and like a cartoon. <laughs> In Birds of Paradise, the dark parts seem to always be adjacent to very bright and super saturated colors. This association exaggerates the perceived brilliance of color patches, which will appear to be self-luminous or to float in space. And this association between super black and super colorful it is what we see in the design of the monster with a very dark fur and glowing teeth. The only difference with Birds of Paradise is that the teeth do not only appear to be luminous, they are luminous. A friend of mine did some art sketches and just randomly he made the teeth green. I thought, man, that's quite a cool idea and that's kind of the opposite of the black silhouette. And then I thought, what if they glowed, which was probably just a childhood memory of glowing the dark plastic vampire teeth. But I thought, what if they glowed and then we experimented with that and we found that it seemed quite effective because you had this flat surface and the only sense of three-dimensionality you got was by relating the outline to the teeth. The light produced is very bright, so we could imagine it is a form of bioluminescence. In other words, the production and emission of light by a living organism. It is a phenomenon which occurs widely among animals. It is often autogenic, meaning that the organism produces light by itself. In certain cases, a symbiosis with a bioluminescent bacteria is necessary. In that case, we call the bioluminescence bacteriogenic. There are a lot of uses for bioluminescence in nature, illumination, attraction, defense, mimicry. In the case of the specific monsters, we can only speculate about the utility of bioluminescent teeth. Maybe the teeth mimic the shape and colors of smaller animals to attract prey. It's coming. Oh, I can see its eyes. Not sure them things is eyes. At a certain point in the movie, an alien dies and the teeth stop glowing. So we could imagine that the teeth could work as a form of health indicator. The brightest the teeth, 
the healthiest the animal is. In that case, bioluminescent teeth would not have any utility besides maybe being selected sexually through female preference. In any case, it looks super duper cool in contrast with the rest of body and I really love the design. As far as I know, there are no bioluminescent teeth in nature, but what about unusual teeth colors? Well, there are not a lot of animals with colored teeth in nature. Some examples are the red tooth trigger fish, essentially a vampire fish, but also some rodents like the prehistoric mammal Barbatodon transylvanicus or the nutria, an invasive species native to South America. The red coloration is due to the presence of iron in the enamel of teeth. And now 10 seconds of cute nutria footage. The arrangement of the teeth is also quite particular. Similarly to sharks, the aliens have many rows of teeth, but the teeth go deep into the animal's throat, which reminds me of another animal, the leatherback turtle and its mouth downward spines. There is a reason for this terrifying feature. As they eat, their stomach fills up with seawater and food. Then they expel the water while the spines prevent the food from coming out. The monsters also have a distinctive roar. And it is a mashup of a series of natural sounds. The roar that we finished off with is a combination of many different creatures. We've got bulls, alligators, monkeys, elephants, pigs, horses, bears. Lions, tigers, elk, frogs, leopards, seals, cats, walruses, whale, and pit bull terriers. Where you at? Then we introduced women's piercing screams. It's just got that element of screech and scariness that really sort of makes you feel on edge. I'm sorry if I'm sweaty, the weather is so warm here. There are two types of aliens in this movie. The first alien that the gang encounters is a female, which is the size of a dog and almost devoid of hair. So very different from the males which you have seen in the rest of the video. In biology, when male and female show different size and or appearance, we call it sexual dimorphism. This term comes from the Greek dimorphos, meaning two shapes or two forms. We have plenty of examples of sexual dimorphism in nature, from birds like peacocks or mandarin ducks to elephant seals. One very extreme form of sexual dimorphism that I have learned recently is the case of the triple ward sea devil anglerfish. In this species, the females are significantly larger and they also possess unique adaptations such as a bioluminescent lure on their forehand. Males are very small in comparison. Their reproduction is fascinating, special, gross maybe is the term I'm looking for. In fact, the male is what we call a sexual parasite. It attaches itself to the belly of the female using its sharp teeth, and it fuses with her, relying on her bloodstream for sustenance. The male becomes a portable sac, literally becoming a testicle. I, I like human reproduction. Human reproduction is fine. As I rediscover all the incredible monsters from the silver screen with you, uh, I thought it would have been a cool idea to rank them. But the problem is that I don't know what the ranking system would be based on. I want to talk about science and biology, but the thing is that I cannot really rank this monster based on how biologically plausible they are. Simply because in an infinite universe, there are infinite form of life and lifestyle possible. I cannot rank these monsters 
based on how close their design is to our understanding of life on planet Earth, simply because that doesn't make them better monsters. So what does, what makes the alien in Attack the Block a good monster? To me, it is the evocation of familiar, threatening traits. The director of the movie made the choice to have his monsters behaving in ways that were, that felt familiar. Dangerous, of course, but familiar. What was important to me about the aliens was that they were understandable in terms of existing animal behavior. So if my aliens could do anything from an impossible world, that for me is less dramatically satisfying than if you understand them as creatures and animals. And that is why to me these monsters felt more like very dangerous wild animals than extraterrestrial life forms. They are large running beasts with sharp teeth and that is enough to make anybody run. Even the actors on set were genuinely frightened. When you look at them just standing still, you think, oh, it's not that scary. But when you look at them running at you, then it's a different story. When he's in costume and he moves like an alien, it is flipping scary. If I saw that, you know, in my block of flats, there is no way I would grab some fireworks and try and fight it. I would run for my life. I'm still not sure what makes a great movie monster, but I'm very happy to share with you my journey trying to answer that question. So yeah, that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you very soon. Bye. Ooh.